Hey, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. Little bit, um, I don't know what the word is. Uh, could not, I'm not confused. You know how you'll have a bunch of stuff planned out and then you realize that like the order in which you were going to do things just doesn't really make sense. Then you just like scrap it all and say, screw it. That, that's what's going on in my head right now. I was going to do my fall planters this weekend, but then I have this one planter that I really, really want to do, but I need the kale and the cabbage. And if you watched last week's video, I talked about how I just, I'm not really seeing it. I mean, the, the nurseries have some, but it's just like plain old boring ornamental cabbage it doesn't even look all that great and uh, I want like the fun pretty varieties with the white and the pink and the purples and it's it's for some, a planter that I've just I've wanted to do for a while but there have been a few things that have happened out here these pots finally got them dried out stocked stocked stacked together so I need to move those the electric Last week I was talking about how the, there was a big problem with the electric out here. Well, it, I fixed it. Turned out there was an extension cord plugged into an outlet in the garage that had a short in it. So I, I just had to unplug the extension cord. It was an outlet that I didn't, I had no idea was wired into these outlets that are here, there, and over there. So uh, that's great. I'm going to be able to return all those GFCIs. The GFCIs, the light was blinking and I read up on that GFCI and it said when it blinks and like it won't re-trigger that means it's time to replace it but apparent, apparent there was just a short in the it's just it's that time of year where it's really pleasant to be sitting outside at nighttime and I love having things lit up and I have like colorful spotlights which I'd like to add some more of but that's you know a thing for another time probably but even though things are winding down and uh, temperatures are starting to cool somewhat there's still just so much fun to be had out here but it's more of just like a, hey I did a lot of the things I needed to do and I'm gonna sit back relax and enjoy them which I love to do at nighttime. Having electricity important to get things lit up. Now I did manage to find a couple of cabbages that I absolutely love. Isn't this a stunning cabbage? Where's its name? Who are you? Oh, can you see it? I for some reason picked that up at the most awkward angle. This is called Ruby. This is called Ruby Perfection and it has almost a metallic sheen to it. I'm putting shadows on everything. You get heavy leaves like a typical cabbage. There's something about the foliage on this one that just screams to me. I think it's absolutely stunning. I'm going to pair this up with some millet. This beautiful millet in the background has a nice kind of a chartreuse foliage to it and I'm probably going to put these implanters on my front porch. But otherwise, I haven't really found anything else as far as kales and cabbages go that I have liked. So that's all I've been able to dig up. And these are big. I have two of them. The other one's a little bit more wonky. It started to bolt because we had a little bit of a heat spell. So I tucked it here under this fetzia over here to help shade it somewhat. These get afternoon shade right here where they are. And they're in a spot where they're not going to get too heavily hit by the sprinklers, which is great. That was a weird zoom in, zoom out thing that happened because I was trying to balance myself. I did that on accident. It's just a beautiful cabbage. Hopefully it'll still look nice when it's time to plant it. That should only be like a week away. And then I do have an assortment of things to work with over here in my gorilla cart and I would like to get my plantings done so I can get my gorilla cart back. This is a bit much. This holly I picked up on clearance. This is for a different project of winter time kind of thing but it was I don't, I don't remember I think it was like $12 and it's absolutely beautiful. There's nothing wrong with it. It has excellent shape to it. It has a top cut that I'm not crazy about but that's okay. It'll grow up and around that and it should hold on to its form. It's an Oakland holly and these are good to zone six, I believe. Does it say on here? It's good to zone six. It took me forever to find that. I don't know why I was reading the back of this and it didn't say that anywhere on the back except for over here. It says it in Spanish where it says zonas six to nine. I was like, well, I can figure out what that means. It didn't even occur to me to just look at the front of the tag. But this is a, a decent size holly. This will get pretty big. So you get 15 to 20 feet high, 12 to 15 feet wide, but that's going to take a pretty long time. But this holly, the Oakland holly, does hold on to kind of a nice conical shape. They'll, they'll veer from it sometimes, but it, they're really easy to prune and get back into having that nice form. So I'm really excited about this holly, actually. I've got this to uh, do a winter project with, it will ultimately probably end up 
in the ground up here behind those hydrangea trees next year. Now that's depends if my neighbors up here think about cutting down they have a couple of spruce trees up here that aren't they're not looking too great so i understand why they want to cut them down that's fine i like my privacy though so <laughs> that holly may end up up here in the corner i might go back and grab another one so that there will be one on each side but they'll have to be spaced out well, pretty well because that's still a pretty big plant to have up there on the hill I might have to rethink that a little bit. Oh, and look at this. This is, I should be saving these things for the garden tour, but it's fine. We can revisit them during the garden tour. Look at these berries. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? This is a Brandywine Viburnum. I got this. It's from Proven Wonders. You can see it back there in its nursery can still. I got this last year to go in the ground right over here in this corner and, it, you know, what's been going on. So since it survived the winter just fine in its nursery can, it wasn't a plant that I prioritized for people who have been helping me to go ahead and get planted. I kind of wish I had, but it's okay. This is the time of year for shrubs and to get them planted. So that might be something I get around to, uh, uh, I don't know, hopefully in the next two or three weeks, I'll be able to get this in the ground. Look at the berries on this. The berries plus this beautiful glossy foliage. That's the reason that I like this viburnum so, so, so much. It doesn't look great right now because it's been tucked back here in the deep shade. That way it wouldn't have to be watered too incredibly frequently during the heat spells. But look at, just look at that. Absolutely beautiful they're like a cute i don't want to say baby pink i don't know what kind of pink i would call that but they're pinkish and then the older berries come out to this like bluey purple color i it's one of my favorite shrubs for growing for the fruit for those berries because the wildlife they love these they love those berries and they're colorful and pretty the flowers smelled nice when it was flowering these are more colorful in person so it's not really showing that well on screen, but this this bundle right here has aged out a little bit. So I don't know how I went off in that direction. What I need to be doing this week is uh, I have some plants I need to prep for winter, actually. Have what's left of what was a gigantic, glorious Christmas cactus that I said don't water, and they just they couldn't help themselves. They kept watering it. And then we had the flood back here, and the flood just... I mean, it really did a number on this plant. It's such a shame. I've had this cactus, this Thanksgiving cactus, for such a long time. So uh, that stinks, because this was a very large, beautiful plant. But there are things that can be done. It's not lost forever. It's just, it's a, it's a pretty major setback. So that is going to need a repotting. Not the ideal time of year for it, but I think it's necessary. And then my others, I've gone ahead and stuck under this umbrella. It's just about that time of year with the Thanksgiving cactus, Christmas cactus, whatever. They're not the same plants, but it's going to be the same thing. Right around now is when I like to make sure that they're getting a good amount of shade because this is the time of year when that change in light is going to trigger them to start flowering here in about uh, hopefully the next 12 weeks or so, but they have to get the dark. And I don't know if it's quite dark enough right here, so I may find another spot for them. I'm not quite sure. I'm going to think on that one for a little bit. Okay, and then my amaryllis very unnecessarily wet amaryllis there are different ways to go about getting the amaryllis plants ready for winter time you can go ahead and lift them and cut the foliage off and just put them someplace dark and dry and do things that way wait about i don't know eight weeks or so and then get it going again start watering it or replant it if you dug it up there's nutrients in the foliage though on these plants. Amaryllis would typically be evergreen and just reflower on their own every single late winter into spring. There's variation with times of year. So I, I could also just leave this and keep growing it like a house plant and it'll bloom on its own in the springtime. But when we want to force the bulbs, you got to go ahead, reduce the light, reduce the temperatures and let them go into a dormancy. So I think with this one, instead of cutting the foliage back or doing anything like that, I'm just going to, for now, I'm going to move it here under my umbrella because that's the no water zone. It works out that way because the my people who are helping me water plants know don't get water on the table where everybody sits. So that's what I will do just to help go ahead and get it to start to dry out. It'll start to reduce the amount of light that it's getting over the next uh, probably five days to a week. And then I'm going to take this and put it someplace nice and dark, probably in my basement. They do need a cool space, somewhere between 50 and 60 degrees Fahrenheit, but I don't know. 
I don't think I have a space that's quite that cool for the plant, but that shouldn't be an issue. The main thing is that I get the plant to go dormant. So basically changing its growing habit, going from being in full sun where it's getting consistently watered to being in a shady location and things are starting to dry out, that should still help trigger the, the plant to start to go into a dormancy on its own. And it helps that the nighttime temperatures are starting to drop here also, but it's not, they're not dropping that much. It's gonna be upper 50s a few nights, mostly upper 60s and lower 70s, but in, within like a week and a half, it's going to be even more drastic than that. So that, that will help a lot. I just wanna make sure that I pulled it up so I didn't forget to do that. And you can see the bulbs looking Okay, I had this planted very, very shallow because I was worried about it getting overwatered. Um, as you saw my Christmas cactus, you know, that's something that I had to keep an eye on. That's what I'm going to do with that. Oh, the bird garden. That's what I wanted to work on. So remember in the beginning of the video when I was like, and you think you're going to do the thing, but then something else comes up and the thing doesn't work out? That's what it was, the bird garden. I have some feeders and some new hooks and things that'll hopefully come in the mail today, hopefully, and I'll be able to get some more work done with the bird feeders. I'm standing here looking at, can you see this from here? I don't know if you can. Yeah, do you see that? Another hose came detached. This has never been an issue before <laughs> until this year. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Okay, so that's another hose I need to swap out with something more rigid that's not gonna snap out of my drip emitter. <laughs> what the crap? So what I'm thinking I'm going to do here with this Christmas cactus, holiday cactus, I keep calling it the wrong thing. Schlumbagera. I think it would be smartest to go ahead and get it out of the soil as quickly as possible, or at the very least, I need to dry the soil out as quickly as I can, which is probably going to take a day or so. So I'm going to pull this out and, um, you know, remove any mush that's on here. And look at that, this poor thing. It has plenty of pieces that can be replanted. You know, you just stick those back into the soil. As long as there isn't any rot on them like that and pluck that off of there and just stick it back into the soil. But this is, this definitely needs an entire new setup. Such a shame. I take partial responsibility for this one. I really should have been paying closer attention to what was going on, but you know, things were kind of chaotic. I was a little distracted at the time. I actually thought that that was going to be way more complicated to pull out. It really wasn't. Thank you squirrels for planting your acorn in there. I was able to just grab this oak seedling and pull the entire thing out. There's another thing that was wrong here, and I didn't realize this about this pot. Would have been an easy thing to avoid had I paid better attention, but you see here how the drainage hole is higher than the bottom of the pot. That's not uncommon with hanging baskets at all or pottery in general, but I absolutely despise that. The drainage holes should be in the lowest portion of the pot. With the hanging baskets, they'll have like a plastic liner on the bottom sometimes. This one has it on there, and that's to help lift it up and out so that it kind of has a, a reservoir, almost like a self-watering planter. But that just isn't always appropriate for the plants. And even though the, this is, you know, it has the word cactus on it, it is still one that does like to be watered. Right, you know, these schlumbageras grow in rocky outslopes and in areas with a good amount of rainfall, but very loose soil. They're epiphytes. So it's just, it was really time to repot this anyways. I was just hoping that it, that it would be looking like its big old beautiful self when I did it. Yay, what can you do? So I'm going to give this honest, uh, probably the rest of the day. I'll pick up on this tomorrow because that really, it needs to dry out. I don't want to mess with it too much if there's any mush or anything like that in there. <laughs> I'm at Home Depot. Be evident from the, you just right there. Home Depot. Go get some stuff for my parents, and I thought, since I'm in the area, that I would run in and I don't drive around with the mask on. I just put it on because I'm getting out of the car right now. And I thought, well, hey, I may as well. I can take it off and say hello, hi. And now I need to go back in and not touch the outside of the mask. This is the problem with these things. Yeah, Nicole from My Clean Leaves keeps posting stuff on Instagram that's all fall related. And I'm not ready for fall, but but it's rubbing off on me. And now I want fall things. So thanks a lot, Nicole. No, uh, actually, I just needed a bag of potting soil. So, but like there might be, maybe they'll have some kale and cabbage here. I don't know. Just spent an entire minute explaining that I'm at Home Depot while I'm waiting for my cactus to dry out. And then just 
filmed the floor while I was talking about it. This is going wonderfully. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Okay, they do have kale and cabbage. And for the price, not bad. But I still, where's the beautiful, colorful, you know, the kind that has the white centers and the purple. And these are just, blech. This is a good price though. $5.98 for kale and cabbage this size. Like that's, that's not bad. It's just, I wanted something more exciting. The marigolds are really pretty. Look at the marigolds. Those are nice. Okay, there's one, just one that has a little bit of color in it. Sometimes when temperatures cool, usually when the temperatures cool, those get more intense. The mar I like them. I don't usually plant them, but it's like these are cute. I'll get them. And I'm doing everything in my power to resist getting a pumpkin. They're just they're so cute. The prices aren't that great. Oh, but look at like the little the sugar pumpkins. It's just look at that. It's like the perfect little pumpkin. I mean, that's pretty cute. Like really? Oh no, no, it's not. No, it's not that cute. Absolutely not. I'm not gonna do it. I almost, I almost got one, but it's just, it's not time yet. I can't do it. It's, no. I mean, it kind of is time. It's a last. I mean, I suppose it's not really too early for the pumpkins, especially the sugar pumpkins. They last a really, really long time. That's cute. Cactus with decorative flower. Not a fan of the decorative flowers. We've talked about that before. How the hell am I gonna pull this off? Am I gonna be able to get this back in there? Can I do it? There we go. All right, that wasn't too hard. Look at this Pylocerus. This is a nice, nice Pylocerus azurea. It's only $22. That's a really good deal for a cluster like this. These are decent size. It's probably, I don't know, six and a half, seven inches, the big one. This is tempting. I might get it. By might, I mean I'm, I'm definitely getting this. Hi Pumpkin! I missed you Pumpkin! I forgot to turn the TV off before I hit and record. That's my bad. What is that? What is that? You like the camera strap? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to wake you up. Oh, but you wanna go outside? It's a beautiful day! I mean, kinda. Not really. It's sort of nice. Here we go. Go on. Good boy, Toby. My uh, fly trap catcher thing, it smells so bad. Really need to change that out. Why haven't I... I need to defog the lens. We'll pick up in a minute. Uh, I'm just now sitting down out here, ready to do the potting. I have all my stuff set up over here, and my helper watered it again. I'm going to have to make signs. I'll just print off some signs, laminate them, and start sticking them to things that says, don't water. It wasn't as big of an issue during the heat of the summer, but there's less light now. You know, we're transitioning into fall and the temperatures are starting to cool. So, like, that could kill it. It is a plant that does like water, but not, like, it needs a rest in between. In my cactus garden, that's where I need to put up the signs. So, I don't, I don't really know what to do here, because this is what I was planning on doing for the vlog. Looks like my bird seed stuff isn't going to be here in time to work on that so uh, i'm going to do something i would never recommend doing but i need to dry this plant out so <laughs> i'm gonna flip these guys on here and uh maybe i'll throw something over the tops of the foliage to not blow too much moisture out of those but this is the poor thing it needs to dry out i don't want to repot it while it's still wet because you have to water the plant in and then watering the plant in on top of it already being saturated That'll be too much. I'm just gonna give this like, I don't know, 20 minutes and then I'll rotate it and then another 20 minutes and uh, see what happens. It might just have to pick up in the morning. Okay, that did the trick. It did it enough. Doesn't need to be bone dry, but just more dry. I'm gonna go ahead and throw y'all up on a tripod because I've been swinging and throwing this thing all over the place this whole video. Probably getting tired of that mess, so get a little bit of stability for everything. Okay, there we go. Look at that nice smooth motion. So I have this bark back here. It's the same bark that I picked up in a vlog, what was it, last weekend? Just has bark nuggets, charcoal, and big chunky pieces of pumice. I'm going to mix that in here with the potting soil that's mostly all purpose. I had added some compost into the mix, but this is gonna be close to a 50-50 blend. Given the circumstances here, I need to make sure that the soil I'm using is going to drain exceptionally well. It should drain exceptionally well, no matter what with a schlumberger. Why won't this come off? What's going on here? Struggling, y'all. This stuff doesn't want to come apart. Oh, and just while I'm thinking about it, don't want that. Want nice open drainage on the bottom. 
a bunch of that in there. Actually needs to be blended a little bit better, so I'm just gonna do a back and forth thing here until it's mixed up better. Yeah, that's better. There we go. It's kind of down low in there, but that's okay. I have pieces here like this one that appear to have some rot, but their stem piece is so pretty firm. So uh, I have options here. I could go ahead and just cut these right here, break that off and plop those pieces in and get rid of this piece. But instead, because I'm not really in a rush here, and these are really tough plants with pieces like this, I'm going to allow them to sit out and dry for a few more days so I can get a better idea of how rotten those pieces down low are. That way I'm not wasting anything. I went through to that pot and started pulling out the pieces and there are some that like clearly have some rot but still have some root on them. I'm gonna leave those out. I'll leave them laying on top of some dry soil just like that essentially and they'll put down roots where they want to get growing and then I can break them apart and do something with them at that point. So there aren't going to be a ton of pieces to make the cut to actually go into the new basket right now. Some of them are gonna have to wait a little while. Here's the main chunk that's left from that planter. You can see this section down here, that's toast. It's rotten. One thing that's good though is there's no foul odor, so the rot hasn't been going on for that long, so that's good. At least glad I don't have to worry about flushing these out, but it was just, I mean, there's so much unnecessary root death because of things becoming waterlogged and anaerobic. Such a shame, but you know, it's all right. It's it is what it is, and I do think most of the damage that happened with this plant was actually from the flooding. The only reason I say that is because looking back on it, after that flood happened, there were pieces of this cactus everywhere. They were down my driveway, they were all the way down by the sewer in the backyard, so I think that that's where most of the damage came from as far as like its loss of foliage anyways. There isn't actually anywhere near as much rot under here as I thought there would be. I'm still hesitant to go ahead and pot it up yet. I think I might... This may just have to dry for another day. Like I think I might just leave it right here just like this and let these dry out because I want to get a better look at what's going on in there. And if everything's wet, it can be harder to differentiate what's wet versus what's mushy and rotten. You know what I mean? That's okay. Sometimes when dealing with plants that look like they might need a little bit of rehabilitation, you just don't always know what you're actually dealing with until you get down around those roots and just be safe. Like I said, I'm going to let this sit for a while. And that's only because I have the luxury of having a forecast that doesn't have any rain in it for a few days. So the plants here should be just fine. If I didn't have the option, if it was like, okay, I have to get this potted up right now, which I don't know what why that circumstance would be, but I, if that were the case, then I would clean all that nasty soil out. I would flush the roots out and whatever stems are left on them with some hydrogen peroxide. And then I would rinse that off and then I would let it dry. And then I would dab sulfur powder around any of the ends, any of the roots, basically anything that looks like there may have been rot or anything I had to cut off of the plant. Or I would use cinnamon, sulfur powder or cinnamon. Cinnamon's much more environmentally friendly. So that would probably be the route I would go with sulfur powders. It's, it's like it's kind of toxic, so I avoid using it as much as I can. But it does work really well for treating rot and stuff like that with cactus, or really all plants in general. It works really well. Toby, what you doing back there? Why are you hiding? Why are you hiding, Toby? I can see you. I see you, bud. What are you doing over there? The price he's not pestering me. It's just about dinner time. Yeah, good boy, Toby. Like I had said, that was a shame. That was a really big, beautiful plant, but. Uh, what can you do? It, things happen. With everything that's been going on, that's like the least of my concerns. I'm not really that bent out of shape about it. Especially since you know, there's still a bunch of plant here that I can hold on to. It's not like the whole thing's gone forever. And it's a, it's a Thanksgiving cactus. I mean, these things, they're a dime a dozen. But once they get to be the size this one was, you, they're not like the easiest things to replace. Because it takes them a long time to get that big. But again it's all right you just saw it not too long ago i have two others so i'm not going to cry over this and it's a fixable thing and a learnable moment a teachable moment we can talk about things with rot and repotting and all those things the the mix that was in here i didn't talk about too much it's pretty much the standard of what i would do for any type of epithetic cactus that grows in a climate with plenty of precipitation i'm sorry i'm surrounded by dogs right now something that holds on to some moisture but is nice it, but it also drains very, very well. I went ahead and I moved those other pieces under my umbrella where they can dry off. And then with these, like I mentioned, there are some spots where it looks like there might be some rot getting ready to start right around here. See where that's darker? 
So I'm going to let that kind of finish itself off. I'm not going to pull it off. The Schlumbergeras, these will get kind of a woody stem with age. That's what's going on down here. This is nice and firm. So there are some spots on here where that looks like, oh, it's rotting, but it's actually still hard. So these little leaflets, those can go ahead and fade off, dry off. I'll still have the woody stem and then I'll have something a little bit more solid to anchor these with or to have them root against when I have them sideways. So that's what I'm going to do with those. Some things just aren't a quick fix, unfortunately. I do need to repot this alocasia that's back here. And I think that this green pot that's been sitting out here on this table for months, I think that would be a good pairing for that. That'll work. Let's see here. Do I have soil that'll work for this? Yeah, I do. This'll do. Nice sandy well-drained soil. It has some bark chips in it, some compost. Fairly similar to what I was using before, but there's more gravel and compost and even sand in this, actually. The thing that I'm wondering about here with this is am I going to want to remove a lot of its original soil? Actually, I think that that looks okay. Those roots look healthy. I don't think that it needs to be, like, cleaned out from its old mix. Let's give those roots a little bit of a tickle. Set that down in there. There we go, and then... The fun part, backfilling. Backfilling, hopefully without spilling soil all over the place. Potting mixes for alocasias really vary a lot. There are factors that have to be kept in mind, mostly basically are you growing them indoors or outdoors? And then people like myself, where they're indoors part of the year and outdoors the other part of the year, it gets a little bit complicated trying to find like that happy middle ground between something that's going to drain well not hold on to too much moisture because when they're inside that can cause them to rot and die but then when they're outside and it's nice and hot if it doesn't hold on to enough moisture then you'll be watering these dang things just constantly if you live in a climate that's nice and warm uh, our summers are pretty toasty so i usually have to water my alocasias pretty frequently it's a daily thing they like a good amount of water when it's hot outside go ahead and give this a little bit of a drink just enough to help wash that soil in see and this is why i like to plant things deep i don't like to have them right up against the lid or against the lip that is because then soil just goes pouring everywhere i'm also using a watering can don't have the same control over the water what's coming out of a watering can i try and find something that is a good blend for retaining some moisture but not for too terribly long and still draining well enough for the winter time and you may have noticed it's planted up kind of high i have that root mass sitting up a little bit above everything else in there that's just to help prevent rot during the winter time that way i don't have to route moisture or anything collecting around the bases of those plants it shouldn't be something I have to worry about. Typically, the growth space I keep my plants in is pretty toasty, but in uh, November and December, I keep things cool. I do that for a few reasons. One of those reasons being that there's Christmas lights on the house and my circuit breaker just can't handle the heaters and the circuit breaker. It's just too much for it. And um, so, but that works out conveniently because I also kind of like the plants to experience somewhat of a shift, even if they're tropicals, not all the tropicals out here are actual tropicals, but that way they just experience kind of a season, sort of, even though they're not from places that experience seasons necessarily. It's just, it's always seemed to work out well for them. So November and December temperatures in the garage in my grow space are typically like, I'd say uh, mid 60s to mid 70s. Sometimes it'll drop like down to as cool as 45, depending on how cold it is outside. I try to not ever let it get colder than that. I'd prefer for it to not go below 55, but sometimes it happens and it's, it's always been okay. And then once I get the heaters cranked up after the holidays, it's typically, you know, around 77 to 87, somewhere in there. I try and not let it get over 84, but it happens sometimes. Even with, I have like little thermostats and whatnots, but even still, you know, those take a while to kick in. It's, for some reason, maybe I just have really crappy ones, but it seems like there's like a three degree variance, which is really high. I should probably just get new thermostats. So when things are nice and warm in the grow space, I will be putting a wicking cord under the bottom of this plant and I'll have it on my racks that have a water basin with bubblers underneath them. I won't even have to really worry about watering this plant. It'll be fine, it'll be warm enough to have that wicking cord in there and to have that moisture, and I won't have to water it 
all the time and have to worry about having the moisture settling around the bases, around the stems of those plants where they meet the soil. That's where a lot of the rot comes from. So it's best to be able to avoid that if you don't have them outdoors with good airflow and, you know, outdoor light conditions. Even indoors in a heated space, it's still, eh, the risk of rot still a lot higher. Well, at least I got something done, right, Toby? You're looking extra cute today, Toby. You so happy, you got a big smile on your face. How about you, Tuck? You happy? That might be kind of loud. I need it on, it blows the mosquitoes away. It's not that hot right now, but it's just, they're biting. They're biting me everywhere. Yeah, I can't, where are you going? You stay out of the pool, stay out of that pool. It's weird to think that I'm already trying to figure things out for winter time, but it really, it's time to do that. Little things like getting the last of my repots done with plants like this. And as soon as I finish this, I realize that I think the Morocco, uh, this might be one of the ones that likes a dormancy. I'm not sure. It'll let me know. The plant will give me the signs if that's the case, if it decides that it wants to rest. Like the Amazonicas, sometimes they'll want to take a rest during part of the year, the cooler part of the year, and you can just let them kind of fizzle down. So I'll have to pay attention for signs of that, but I'm not sure. I grew at, not a Morocco, but the Ivory Coast, which is pretty similar, just the foliage isn't quite as stiff on it and it's a little bit smaller at least the one i had that was the case but that one didn't seem to want to winter rest but i've also grown the amazonicas before that just grew all year no problem but then i have had one where after like three years it's like yeah i'm gonna go ahead and go to sleep now and it just went ahead and fizzled on down and popped back up in the spring so i don't that I, I, I don't know but this way just to be safe it's potted up. I'll put a wicking cord up in there. That felt really inappropriate. There's a hole, and a drainage hole in the bottom of the pot. I'll put a wicking cord up into that and down in that. We talked about it. You get it. Oh, for those of you who are wondering, with this Dracaena here, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I reached out to Costa Farms, and they told me it was a Dracaena Mahatma. And I looked up Dracaena Mahatma, and all I get is Cordolan terminalis which is it's like a tea plant and that's i mean maybe that's just uh, this it doesn't look like that to me not at all it's got some sun scorch on it so i can tell you it definitely it doesn't like much sun but i don't i don't know i think that the person who was helping me from costa just didn't know they saw the red and they're like oh that's a cordolin but i don't I don't think so. Nothing about this says cordelin to me, but maybe as it grows, it will. I don't think so, though. I did find one Dracaena that was, I think it was called like Ruby something that looked kind of similar to this, but there's like no information on it. And this is, I gotta say, huge pet peeve of mine. Huge, huge, huge pet peeve. Should not be selling plants if you can't provide a name. I mean, it's one thing to run out of labels, so to put a generic label on there so people will at least know how to care for the plant. I get that. That's better than nothing. But it shouldn't be hard to find out what the plant is. Setting people up for disaster, just like selling things that are potted in pots that don't have holes. So that people who don't know what they're doing, they'll water them, the plant will die, they have to go buy another one. I don't like that. That's dirty. Plant companies should know well enough to put holes in the bottoms of their pots. It's just, why would you not hole, put a hole in the bottom of your frickin' pots? Or make it very clear somewhere on the plant tag that people need to remove the plant to water it and then put it back in there. I don't want to cast shade onto Casa specifically, because a lot of plant companies do it, but they need to stop. I'm sure they care for this plant. It is it's some sort of Dracaena, and it has a tag for a Dracaena, so I'll take care of it along those lines, but it just could none of the people know what it is. That doesn't make sense to me. That's weird. I'm sure somebody knows what it is, but... This shouldn't be this difficult to find it. Okay, end of rant. <laughs> Wasn't really a rant. I don't actually care that much. I'm really that invested into it, but it's just one of those things where you see patterns going on. It starts to get frustrating. You ready to eat, Tuck? He's trying to trick me. He's trying to trick me. He's acting like he hasn't eaten. I know you ate. I know you ate your food. There you go. Big jump. Good boy. Anyway, so y'all get what I'm saying. I, <laughs> in short, I don't have a name for that plant yet. If you know, let me know. I'm not seeing. I don't see that as being a cordolin but maybe it is and just it needs to grow some more for that to be more evident in its shape. I've seen plenty of little cordolins before. They never looked quite like that. I'm talking about the terminalis and the fruticasas that I've seen. I don't think so. But of course, I could be wrong. I mean, it will be kind of fun to grow the plant and see what it does. Because once it doubles in size, if this doesn't have characteristics of a cordolin terminalis or fruticasa, then it never will. It should already have most of those characteristics by now. I, this is, this has everything about the growth form on this plant screams Dracaena, 
but sometimes when the cordolins are smaller, they can have a kind of a similar appearance to this. I don't see it, but maybe. Oh my gosh, I'm being eaten alive. It's time for me to wrap this up. Didn't get much done this week. I'm still very much in rest mode. I talked last week about maybe having to have another surgery, so I'm trying to dial it back to allow things to heal as much as possible before my next appointment, see if that makes a difference. I don't know, that appointment's in a few days, so I don't have any updates for that. But if there's not a vlog next weekend, then that means that I will have had that surgery. Well, hold on. No, I do have an update there. Editing Jeff, cutting in on everything. Pumpkin, where'd you go? She was following me. She's been freaking out because her brother's over here on the kitchen table. He, he's dead. She doesn't know. He's dead. No surgery. Doctor didn't say anything about it. And I was like, I'm not going to say anything about it if he's not going to. They're just, they have like a chemical they put over the spots that have like this it's a long story. Basically, like, they put acid on me every couple weeks, and they're just gonna help that that, like, burns things down. It feels great. No, it actually, it's not too bad, because I don't have a ton of nerve endings back there. They're starting to come back. Hi, Charlie. Hey, bud. How you doing? You don't come down this often in the morning. Because it's getting cool outside. Do you want me to open the window? You want to watch the nature channel? That's what this. He wants to watch the nature channel. Or he smells Rio. Maybe that's what it is. Rio is my hamster. <laughs> All right. There you go. I think it's nice enough outside. That's justifiable. I need to open them if it's gonna mess with the AC. Look at you. I see you, stalker. I see you. You creeping. Pumpkin. What you doing, baby girl? What are you doing? You hiding? I can see you. You know I can see you, right? Okay, where are you going? Pumpkin's acting weird because the hamster cage is down here because the hamster died last night. I knew it was coming. It's over two years old. They don't usually live very long. And it was very peaceful. I, mean, I don't want you to see the actual dead hamster. I think I had my last hamster for about 12 to 14 months when it died, so it was kind of unexpected, but I didn't know how old it was when I got it. Rio, I got in October of 2018, so... I've known this was coming for a while. And I noticed last night before I went to bed that he hadn't taken his treats that I had left out for him. So I was like, eh, this isn't a good sign, but you don't want to wake up a sleeping hamster. They're nocturnal. So I was like, well, we'll see tomorrow morning if those treats are still there. I'm going to lift up the burrow. That's just the way it goes. But it's just that cage is in the bedroom. Like, and Pumpkin sees it every single night. But now that it's down here on the table, she is like, um, my world is upside down. That's not supposed to be here. Put things back the way they're supposed to go. I don't like change. Stop making changes. Uh, can I help you? What are you doing? What are you, you just, yep. You like sticking your head in cracks and screaming, don't you? You like the echo? Is that what it is? Between the fridge and the wall. Anytime you open a cabinet that's down on the ground, if she's hyper, she'll come strolling in here and be like, oh, wait, wait, wait. Leave that open. I need to take a peek. I need to know what's in there. Oh, is it time for a part two? Do we need another five and a half minutes of my cat eating and drinking? I don't think so. She's probably not going to be into that. That video only happened because one day I was sitting over here at my computer with the camera sitting right here, just like this. And she came over and started eating. So I just popped my lens cap off and hit record. And uh, that worked out. Otherwise, I don't think it would have pumpkin rack metal jump that far. Thank you guys for watching and liking that video. Uh, it wasn't intended to be taken seriously. Just something cute and silly that I meant to release. Like, oh, I think that that happened maybe a week or two ago that she came creeping up while the camera was sitting there and I filmed that. And I was going to put that out as my 600th video, but it turned out by the time I released it, it was like my 615th video or something like that. And for the 30,000 subs, which we've, I think it's at 32 now. So it was just, it was just for jits and shiggles. Okay, my animals are on something today. What are you guys doing? One, Charlie, you're not supposed to be up there, Charlie. Go on, get down. There we go. That's better. I know it doesn't seem fair that Pumpkin is allowed up here, but the other one's not allowed over there. Pumpkin can't get up onto all the different levels where the other cat foods are, and she can't jump up on that counter. And that other counter is where food is prepared. Over here, we use a plate. It always tickles me when people are like, did you know you eat off of there? No, I eat off a plate. This is sanitized very frequently because it's where I have to change my bandages. So this gets cleaned every single day with an antibacterial everything the chairs the counter everything it's a whole process now, this is 
Very confusing for you, isn't it, Pumpkin? Oh, you giving him... All right, that was sweet, like two kisses. Toby, you're cute, Toby. Pumpkin, what are you looking at? What are you seeing? What's out there? Do you see a chipmunk, Pumpkin? You see the little tip of her tail's flicking. Something's got your attention. I handled that, the hamster situation. Need to go ahead and clean that cage up and sterilize it. I think it's time to get outside. That's all sanitized. This is not, he had so many toys. <laughs> Tons of toys, lots of bendy bridges and things, but the things that I use the sanitizer on aren't, you can't use them on the wood. So anything that was wood was soaked in a soapy solution and that's going to take a few days to dry. That's all clean. I can put it away. Oh. Poor Rio, I'm gonna miss him. He was a fun little hamster. Don't think I'll be getting another one. They just don't live long enough. You know, two years is about the average for Syrian hamsters. And so even when like, you know it's coming, which I did, it's still such a bummer. Hamsters normally leave their den when they pass away. So it's kind of um, shocking. Usually it'll happen in the middle of the night, you get up and then there's just your dead pet laying in the cage. But Rio went in his sleep in his burrow, which doesn't happen very often. It's much less traumatic than with my last hamster. Because also with the last one, I wasn't expecting it because I didn't know how old that one was. And, you know, I was hoping to get a couple years with the hamster. I got like 12 to 14 months, which I also think I said before. Whereas with Rio, he was over two years old, so I knew that knew this was coming. These have had a few days to dry, so I can go ahead and pot these up. That's kind of the one perk to this vlog. I guess I didn't really mention this. So last week's vlog was very last minute. This vlog you're watching right now was supposed to be out last week. It's a whole thing. Things got complicated. So in just a few minutes here, when it cuts back to before I picked up the camera in front of my computer and gave the surgery update, it's going to look kind of weird and wonky. That's because I it's, it's a week later from when that was shot. Hot mess as always. So these pieces right here, they had about a week to sit out. There's no mush on them. They're nice and firm. I wanted to make sure they could sit out for several days. One to dry out so that they'll get rooted properly without any rot. And so I could better distinguish what is a woody base that's developing on them versus what's rot. And then anything that was rot being able to chip that off of them. These three pieces here have a good amount of that woody base on them. I imagine they're probably just going to want to hang, so I'm going to let them just go in there at an angle for right now. When I get the hanger put back on this, it's going to help straighten them out, at least a little bit. Not perfectly, but somewhat. I don't want to put them down too deep either because I don't want those to rot, but they're going to be top heavy. This soil media is so loose that I don't think a stake would do them any good. I don't see that being necessary. I think they would just fall right over even if they had stakes on them. And you can see there, I just barely put the ends of those growths down into the soil. And I think that that's fine. I don't think it needs any more than that. I'll add a little bit more so that when I water it in, there's going to be some forgiveness there because these loose soils, you know, they, you have to kind of burp them, let the bubbles out and you'll end up not having anywhere near as much mix as you thought you did. But this is, that's not bad. That held up pretty well. I'm not expecting to get any new flowers out of these this year. Maybe next year, this year, they're going to want to focus on getting some new roots put down. I guess I could try and kind of weave them around the hanger. That might give them some stability that would be nice because the less they move around the better they're going to root in yeah that'll work i'll grab some clips or some twine or something to help hold those up that'll get them rooted without them having to hang over quite as dramatically okay that's good it was actually really bugging me that the original vlog that was going to come out didn't have a finish to that cactus getting repotted because i was just like well this is going to need several days and i didn't have several days so that that worked out okay now we've cut up we know what's going on here got to see some animals updated about the surgery we'll go ahead and get back to where things were last week in the vlog oh yeah i'm gonna go it's getting dark out not much happened i don't need to tell you that you were here <laughs> but it's just life i'm taking it easy like intentionally not doing a lot right now <laughs> so everybody's doing well having a great day and a great life everything's just going beautifully for you Ugh, i love the colors out here at night time i have some more lights coming in and then i'm going to do the nighttime tour i said i was going to do one last year and then i filmed part of it and forgot to film the rest and so i ended up just putting that together in like a one minute video and that's on my instagram feed on my instagram and uh, when I get around to doing the one for this year, I'll just combine the two 
and put it together that way. I felt kind of bad I never released that one, but it was only a minute long, so I just was like, eh, it's fine. Love how shiny and reflective and leathery these leaves are. Such a fun alocasia. All right, been nice. Got lots of rest this week. Gonna keep that trend going next week. Hope y'all are able to do the same. Find some peace within your plants, within your minds, within your gardens. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.